Hello there, my name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video I'm doing some sprite work of the lead character from this anime series that I've been watching called Armor Hunter Mellow Link. And it's a spin-off of the Botoms franchise, uh, which I'm a big fan of. And that's why I've already got an existing sprite that I'm kind of extracting the proportions from here for my new sprite and uh, just kind of starting with a stick figure that I could move into a different pose. As for sizing, the sprite height here is about 50 pixels tall, give or take, and my overall canvas size is 250 by 250 pixels. Now obviously the overall canvas size doesn't really matter too much for just designing a single sprite, but I do like to give myself a lot of room to work within. Um, it kind of feels like a bit claustrophobic if the canvas were only slightly larger than the sprite itself, so I like to open it up a bit. And then usually when I'm finished, I'll arrange a few of those work in progress versions together in that space. So it becomes a little bit of a process summary in a way. So once the angles and proportions of the stick figure are in a pretty good spot, I start adding form and creating the silhouette of the body. In order to add thickness faster, I increase the pencil tool size to about 3 pixels. And I know the idea of using a larger brush size to add thickness faster may seem obvious, uh, but I swear that for the longest time I would just use the 1 pixel size exclusively. Like it didn't occur to me to increase the size. And then you're kind of making these chicken scratches back and forth trying to fill in that form. So yeah, increasing the brush size definitely helps speed things up here. And actually before that even, what I really used to do, and this is going back like years to when I first started pixel art, uh, is I would make my sprites sort of sequentially, like one body part at a time. So I'd start by making the head uh, like mostly completely rendered, then draw a body underneath it, and then kind of add some arms or legs or whatever. Uh, the problem with that though, I realized eventually, was that it was harder to control proportion. Um, it kind of overlooked the whole idea of proportion altogether, really. And the pose itself didn't have a lot of thought put into it. It just kind of happened, and usually wasn't too dynamic. Now of course, I'm not suggesting there's really a right way or a wrong way to make a character sprite. Uh, it's more about what works for you, and being able to achieve the result that you're aiming for. Uh, for me, these days, I enjoy seeing what kind of gesture I can find just from that stick figure alone and then slowly build up the rendering by introducing little pockets of detail for the elements of the character costume. For this sprite in particular, I was actually working from a reference image and trying to translate the overall pose and costume using that. Um, I just kind of had this picture open on my phone next to my laptop and would keep glancing over to it for comparison. Uh, I don't know, does that qualify as a dual monitor setup? Uh, but using that reference image was actually a really fun approach. I mean, if I'm doing fan art like this, I'll of course usually look up reference images to double check costume details and stuff, but normally I'm making my own pose with that. So with this, it was something just a little bit different to also translate the pose from that artwork. I guess if there was a personal touch I brought to this though, um, aside from just the pixelated style, it was that I sort of cocked the wrist here a little bit, um, because sometimes I guess I just like turning up the sass level of a pose for no apparent reason. By the way, since I haven't mentioned it yet, uh, Armor Hunt to Mellow Link is a great show. It's sort of a quick little 12 episode series about this ex-soldier dude hunting down evil military generals and taking them on in their mechs using only a rifle. It's got like a bit of a sci-fi western vibe to it, so if you're in the market for an anime series that kind of blends elements of The Mandalorian and Metal Gear Solid set in the Votoms world, uh, then definitely check it out. Um, and for me, when I see something I like like this, uh, I'm compelled to see it recreated in pixel form, so here we are. Anyway, let's go ahead and run a brief recap, and then I just want to talk about a couple of the finishing touches for the sprite work. Alright, firstly, I just wanted to point out the colors here. Um, I mostly went with a simple shading scheme of each main color having just one singular shade tone, uh, similar to the shading style of the anime. And the colors here are also fairly moderate saturation to kind of fit the mood. Um, well, they're moderate saturation for me. Uh, I tend to really push saturation to like 90 to 100. Uh, but here I kept it, I think, around 70 to 80 or so for a lot of these. But I feel like there's still a good amount of punch to the colors. The other thing I wanted to mention was just the use of selective outlining on the sprite, probably most recognizable on the legs here. And this is something I've been enjoying when making this particular style of sprite. And essentially, it's a great way of getting a partial outline look that helps give the sprite some presence, but it can also be used to great effect for controlling the topography of the sprite. 
So on this leg, for instance, we're able to see it from the side and therefore we're getting a view from the front to the back of the leg. So the shading here is fairly full and continuous, uh, kind of showing the depth towards the back of the leg there. Whereas with this leg, um, we're looking at it more from the front, so it wouldn't make as much sense for the sides of the leg to be shaded to the same depth as if it were the back of the leg. So a nice compromise is to sort of hit it with selective and separated dashes of shading that carry the angle or the contour of the leg. Um, it's almost like anti-aliasing in a sense, I guess, where we're kind of creating a slight blend of that idea between shading and no shading, uh, you know, without taking it too far in either direction. That's kind of my thinking anyway. Um, again, there's multiple ways to go about achieving a particular result, but I like this one here and now and just wanted to share that. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think that'll do it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed watching um, and thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.